in Whitfield. Excuse me there, Matt, little <laughs> difficulty there. Um, both teams coming in 6-0. and um, A very, you know, overflowing crowd tonight on hand at Woodfield tonight. We expect a battle. Four quarters of hard, hard-nosed football. Got a perfect night for football. Little cool weather. But that reminds me of them old Viking football games, Matt. A little cold weather. Well, I mean, it's just perfect for football. I'll tell you what, it reminds me of the old Green Bay Packer football games, too. So, well, we, Matt, we don't want to start on that. That's right. But uh, <laughs> getting back to the game here at hand, um, Shando comes in 6 0. I believe ranked first in Region 19 computer rankings. And Monroe Central is ranked fifth in the Region 19 computer rankings. Really, the playoff type atmosphere already. Um, you know, I'm sure if things go as planned for both teams, that the both of them will still be around for week 11. But we'll find out tonight. You know, last week we found out what we had. We didn't get things going offensively like we wanted to. But defensively, got another good thing. And I'm telling you what, with this Barnett, this C-Lock, this Cody Leach, Corey Brown, the Zirkle, the Hedge, the Miley, a number of weapons for the Shenandoah Zeps just the absolute biggest test of the year defensively so far. Exactly, and the, the thing about it is, you know, uh, the North Central and Shenandoah are both in the same region, you know, and like you said, uh, Shenandoah being ranked number one and North Central being ranked number five, it's basically just like a playoff game. Right. Shenandoah kick, kick off to start the game here. It'll be number 19, Nathan Hedge, he's a 6'3", 200-pound senior. And, uh, you know, we talked about it all year. We opened up last week with a big kickoff return. I'm sure Coach Costa and the gang would like nothing better than to come out with a uh, big kickoff return. And uh, they'll kick from the hash, and you might look for something tricky here, like a squib kick. Uh, you know, maybe try to catch somebody off guard, which we got some, some guys up front, some linemen, so I hope they're ready. And it is a squib. It'll be picked up, and it won't be. It'll be picked up 10-yard line by Gabe Gordon. And he'll have a little bit of running room here in the sideline. Nice, nice return. I tell you what, for for a kick like that, and him mishandling it, and uh, you end up getting about 20, 25 yards out of that, he did a good job. And uh, he had a good blocking up there, too. And I want to note up here, our spotter picked that out, very observant. I uh, got a little help up there tonight. Uh, but our Seminoles were ready, didn't handle it as cleanly as we hoped, but Gabe was able, able to scramble up field for a nice uh, nice game. We'll start out right about, about the 30 and a half yard line. And we'll come out to I formation and ring, wing right. Jeff will play a 5-3 defense. Just a quick toss. Uh, he gets about maybe two yards out of that. Uh, i tell you what, that uh, Canada uh, corner came up awful quick to make that tackle. Number six, Jake Zirkle on the tackle. You'll be hearing a lot about him tonight. He plays pretty strong split in for the uh, Zeps as well as a, uh, I believe, an outside linebacker on defense. Knowles with a little Redskin special here. No, it won't be, but it'll be issue on like a quarterback keep. And I'll tell you, he's close to the first down, maybe about 
maybe about a half a yard shy, but it all depends where they spot the ball, Andy. Right, Matt. We talked about the 30 and a half, and it looks like they're on the 40 and a half. Monroe Central pulling two uh, linemen back this direction, and uh, this should really show his quickness there. He's like a little, uh, you know, water bug back there in the backfield. <laughs> And that's a good comment, John, oh, if you're listening. <laughs> and we'll measure for the first down. And, and he picked up the first down. So that's our first first down of the night, obviously. And I'll tell you, that's a, that's a good way to start a ball game right there, Andy. <laughs> Took it up the first down, you know, um, with a second down about eight. So Right. So just what they want to do, they want to establish a little bit of a running game here early. It'll be the same formation there. Two back set, wing to the right. We'll just run Big Gorbin down through about the four hole. Look like that's just basically a wing right power right, Andy. Right, he's uh, he's upfield for about a two yard gain. That'll be about second eight for Seminoles. Seminoles, as they do all year long, they run plays in. Sometimes the Millers, sometimes Fergie, sometimes Kenny Robinson. Jendo, I'm sure you've noticed throughout the year how big they are. Got a lot of good sized linemen in there and a pretty athletic defense. Monroe Central in trip formation. Yes, he has plenty of time to turn. He hits Gordon over the middle. And he picks up the first down to Moore. I'll tell you what, Andy. He had all kinds of time to throw. I think uh, it looks like Chad is kind of a little bit leery of uh, Monroe Central's passing game. Right, Chad Burkhart, Eddie McConnell, Chris Jeffers, uh, Curtis Merrick, and Sean A. there on the offensive line gave quarterback plenty of time. And talked to Ishii this week out of school. He felt pretty confident, and he hung right in there with a lot of patience and actually went back to the middle of the field after they spread out to the right. So yeah, not, nice play by the Seminole exactly. offense. They're spreading them out again here. Shotgun formation. Gives to Gordon. And he's sacked for about a three-yard loss there. Looks like Chandler read that one all the way. Right. That's number 58. Uh, John Horn, outside linebacker. Pretty good size, 210 linebacker. And, uh, you know, a lot of times... You know, especially if they scouted us, a lot of times if we go shotgun with Gordon right there beside it, I'm sure they scouted, and the tendency sometimes is to run that fullback draw. Well, so a nice play by the Shenandoah exactly. defense. You got to remember, you know, the first, you know, the first quarter kind of, kind of filling each other out, see what, you know, what we have right. to work with. And Shenandoah is obviously a very good team for a very good reason, and that's because they got the athletes. If you'll go deep, nice toss, knocked away by number six. Number six is Zirkle again, as he played safety on that plate. I believe he's safety. I uh, told you wrong here earlier, but uh, Ishi, uh nice toss out there. It's actually right on stride. Just a good play by number six Zirkle, and uh, you know, going for going for it all there, Matt. Yeah, well, yeah, like I said, you know, uh, kind of feeling each other out, and he was kind of testing the waters there a little bit. That'll bring up a long third down. We'll go trip to our left. Is she still in the shotgun? And uh, in a four defense this time. Oh, oh! I believe the ground hit. The, yeah, he was. I think the, the ground caused that fumble. You could see uh, Ishi as he rolled out, but they had a couple spies on defense that was watching him all the way. And two white jerseys. Rolled left as Ishi went to his right, and uh, Ishi only was able to pick up about seven yards. But the always dangerous Ishi uh, really made something out of nothing there. Matt, sure he did. rolled and got some pressure on this side, but he did hit the ground. That'll bring up fourth, seven, and that'll be a punt formation for uh, David Spielman. And he gave Spielman a little bit of room to work with, too. <laughs> ah, took a bad bounce. Well, I'll tell you, I, I think Spielman, he was he didn't want to kick it in the end zone, so he kind of laid off a little bit and maybe laid off a little bit too much. Right. Last week we had some problems where we had some field position and we didn't convert and we had to pick or kick from inside our territory there. And Spielman went ahead and booted it into the end zone. 
and they start to 20. This time he tries to hit the corner, but trying a little bit too hard, I believe, and, and I think the net gain of that punt was only around seven or eight yeah. yards. So not really what we wanted there, but after a couple first downs, we'll turn the ball over to that uh, very powerful, big, hard-running Jeff offense. And we'll line up in a 5-3 with our backers edging up. And they'll hand it right up the middle of the big, huge hole. And that'll be Cody Leach, number 41, for some big yardage. Big 220-pound fullback. And I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of him tonight, Matt. Well, sure we will. I saw Aaron Brown uh, you know, was in on the tackle, but he's also going for the ball. You know, I think uh, yeah, that's a way to you know, try to strip that ball away from him at the same time, have the other arm around him. Just in case you can't strip the ball, you can still tack one. We uh, heard a lot about Barnett, and he's been getting the majority of the carries. And uh, you always talk about, well, Coach is saving something for the big game. Well, you wonder about Coach West, if maybe he's got a different uh, set of, just uh, different types of game plan for this big game. Oh, I'm sure he has something in his back pocket. That's a little bit better job, but Barnett's upfield for about three, four yards. I tell you, Andy, I think we're going to have, we're going to, have to see a lot of uh, a lot of tackles, you know, tonight by our uh, our linebackers. All right, you know, uh, as big as uh, their offensive line is, the linebackers going to have to have a big game tonight. He's second about six and a half. That'd be Barnett upfield with a nice hard run. He'll have to be gang tackled as he is there. And on the tackle is number 44, Gabe Gordon, and number 70, Robbie Demerling. And we might mention he's back after a couple week layoff. And uh, you know, big big to have him back. Obviously, sure it is. I tell you, and it looks to me like uh, Chando's just basically wanting to power it up the field. Right. Nothing fancy, just, you know, hard-nosed football. And talking to some of the defensive linemen this week, Coach Sherman is telling them not to give any ground. If you have to, take two guys on, create a pile, and let your linebackers clean up. So big third down play here early by the Zeps. And that'll be Barnett around the right end. For about a 15 yard gain. So after he turned the corner, defensive end lost contain, and he's a big boy to bring down, especially to get the head of steam going, Matt. Yeah. That's one of them kind of guys you just have to hit, you know, from the knees down and you know, hopefully take his legs out from underneath of him. Right. Yeah, he got tackled with a big guy low, put the shoulder into him. Tight twist by the Zeps. Nothing fancy straight up the hole. Barnett with a little athletic, you know, leap there. <laughs> and big guy up in the air. Gain He'll about be upfield. Maybe, what, three yards on the play. I tell you, Andy, I think if, if Monroe Central holds them, you know, here without scoring, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a good ball game. But we, right. need, we need to make a stand right here. Yeah, they've been hearing it all week, too, about how big Shenandoah was. And really, you can't prepare for size like this because you can't practice against guys this big, obviously. So, you know, like you said, feel each other out, get the pads tracking, and we'll get a better idea of what to expect here. No hand the ball up the middle to Cody Leach. He'll be stopped for no game. So good job in there by Big Eddie McConnell. He's got the legs for the lineman, Matt. Sure he does. And, and yeah. right there, he held his gap, stuffed the hole, and that's exactly what you need to do against this type yeah. of offense. It's only a defensive lineman, as long as you don't get pushed back, and if you stand your ground, then you're doing your job. Right. And, you know, the guys want to hit the weight room, they want the big biceps, but it's all in the legs. It's all, all in the legs, time. exactly. So you got to hold that base and hold your gap there. Yeah, he's, and he's, he's fight. He, he kind of stood him up, and then, uh, you know, Gabe Gordon came in there and finished him off. That's what the linebacker's supposed to do. Right. Uh, bring it up about third and seven for the Zeps. They'll split one right and one left. High formation, and there'll be a flag. There'll be a the delay game. game against the Zeps. All right. That'll get the, the Noles fan a little bit fired up. 
as they try to get the defense fired up for this big third down and long situation. Shenandoah sure has got confidence in their running game, and uh, you know, they may think about trying to get half of it here and half of it on fourth down, you never know, but they'll split right, split left, go in motion, to reset strongly to the right. A little bit of overthrown there by Seahawks. I tell you, I tell you, Andy, he, uh, he had uh, Cody Miley out there, number 15. He had him beat by about a step too. Yeah, he's got the size on her uh, corner back here, six three Miley against Brown over there, and uh, they'll bring up fourth and long. The depth are in a punting formation. So just as you just said, Matt, if we could just stop them here, and that's exactly what they did. Ishi and Eric Brown. Aaron Brown, excuse me, back deep for symbol. Nice punt by Shenandoah, who's going into the end zone. Shoot, wait, clear past the end zone. <laughs> so we, we talked about Spielman trying to hit the corner, but they'll, they'll do a little better than us. He'll get about 21 yard net out of the play. I'll tell you what, if he would have been in the middle of the field, it might have gone through the goal post. <laughs> Does that count for three if it gets it to the goalpost, Andy? <laughs> well, not here at Woodsfield. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure the number of the punter there, but like number said, 41, I think it was. Or 41, Cody Leach. So the big guy getting it done with the leg there. Seminoles back on offense. Split backfield, wing right. Just a little dive play up the middle. Nice little play in there, man. Well, you know, Andy, I'll tell you what. You know, people can remember last year when we played Chesapeake in the playoff game. Yeah, you know, we would said all year, if you want to beat in North Central, you've got to run right at them. Yeah, you know, right the middle, and that's what Chesapeake did. And I think maybe that might be a key in this ball game. You know, right. Yeah, you know, with the big guys, as long as you can get a you know a, a block or two and run those little dive plays, you might get three or four yards to play. Right. You just have to understand as an offensive lineman, you just have to shield the guy. You don't have to pancake him. You don't have to knock him back five yards. You have to get in his way. And with the quickness of Ishii, Gordon, and Brown, that's all he needs, a little seam in there. Nothing going there for Gordon. I tell you, uh, Chando had a six-man line that time, too. So, uh, after a nice pickup there on first, gap, first down, excuse me, uh, nothing going on second now bring up third and very short uh, as we started on the 20 exactly we just have to get to the line for the first down so there's no need to measure you can see from up here that it's about six eight inches short of the third yard line so wouldn't expect anything except for something straight ahead try to pick up a first Maybe down here the quarterback sneak it's you know it's hard to tell what got motion and that'll be Ishii, sneak. yeah. He's got a first down. Nice little drive there by the Christopher Jeffers. And they'll pick up the first down. So no need to get fancy, especially down in your territory like that. Uh, just quarterback sneak and pick up the first down. And you know, we'll, we'll go first down here and try to keep that running game established. Well, that's one thing about a game like this, Andy. Sometimes you can get too fancy. Right, you know, instead of just sticking to the basics, and you know, it, it, it's easier to beat a team with the basics than it is to beat teams all the fancy so plays. Wishbone set, and we'll pass out this. And Ishi, it. Oh, oh! I tell you what, there looks like he's open for a second. Uh, Kenny, up. And nice number, effort. Nice effort by Kenny. You go up for that ball like that. And I'll tell you, that's a good play for a uh, first down play, Andy. Oh, yeah. Number 44, Dan Mazgay on the coverage. He was right there. So good job by the Shenandoah defense. <laughs> As they uh, look like they're going to run their familiar belly series out of their bone formation, and then he dropped back and passed. So another bone formation. Kenny split out to the left. And they'll run that belly stick there. And Brown wrapped up and hog tied and wrestled down the ground. So about a three yard gain there. I'll bring up the third and seven. You got two minutes left to go in the first quarter. Still no score. So 
So take a good bit of time to get this play in, Matt. So I hope you're aware of the play clock here. We'll come up to the line of shotgun. Split backfield shotgun. You got a split left. Option play. If she keeps it. Now I tell you he did his best, but he's down again. The ball come loose here at the end of the play, but I believe he hit the ground first. And a uh, little new wrinkle there. We haven't seen that. But uh, you know, Shando able to uh, hold him to about a four yard gain. That'll bring up fourth down. <laughs> nice little play there, Matt. We might see more of that later as they fake and then run the option. So Steelman back. Yeah, that's a lot better punt there. Number 50, Chris Jeffers down to make the tackle. Nice co nice coverage there by the Seminole punt team. Looks like Shandu starting out about the same spot they did last time, Andy. So early on, a couple first downs for the Knowles, a couple for the Zeps. Uh, still 0-0 here in the first quarter with 38 seconds to go. So far, pretty just much uh, of an even game. Right. I mean, with our uh, highly publicized defense, you know, we, we, it was very key that we held them there in the first quarter. I'll tell you what, Barnett's running little, hard. That was just or a little trap play up the, up the middle. Right, that's Cody Leach. Hit initially by number 90, or 85, Dan Miller, but uh, Dan not able to bring him down until after he drags him ahead for about a six-yard gain, so, you know, that, that shows the power of that 220 pounds and 5'10", you get that low center of gravity, and you, you know, you hit him high again, and you're not gonna bring the big guy down. So don't try to get this off before the quarter. Yeah. But they won't get not it off make here. It. So after one quarter of play, it's 0-0 zero, zero here at Monroe Memorial Park here at Woodsfield. We'll take a break and be back right after this. F.W. Shoemaker Insurance Agency celebrating 100 years of service to our community. F.W. Shoemaker is an independent agency representing many reputable companies for all of your insurance needs. Only the most professional agencies represent Westfield Insurance. The best of the best are recognized as Westfield Platinum Agencies, and F.W. Shoemaker is proud to be a platinum agency. F.W. Shoemaker Insurance and the Monroe Central Seminoles, two winning traditions. Okay, and we're back. Getting ready to start the second quarter. Still nothing, nothing. Head the other direction, Matt. It'll be a second, about four. They'll go twins right, five backfield. We're still in our 5 3 defense. And they'll split Barnett up the middle. And he'll be upfield for first down. So I'm sure they're splitting their two guys out right now, Matt. You know, just to get two guys out. You know, it's pretty simple football. It's to take two guys, two defensive guys out of the way. You know, for the middle of the field, then just run off tackle or somewhere in between the two, yeah. four, six holes. Exactly. It's like, just uh, come right back. Just like Chuck said earlier, you know, they're, they're going to start spreading us out a little bit. You know, maybe uh, bouncing something up the middle or, you know, it just... Right. Same formation this time. And Cody Leach, uh, he gets nothing. I'll tell you what, half of a job there by Dan Miller... Oh, I'm sorry, Curtis Merrick out there, uh, and he got, I think he even lost the yard in the end, and then Gabe Gordon came up and Oh, yeah. Him off. I was going to say, I was watching Kay Leach come up the field. He he buried one of our guys, knocked him seven yards down the field, but Gabe, like a good linebacker, does. You know, it's like Spielman said the other day, find see ball, tackle ball. And, <laughs> and when the linebacker sees the ball, that's all he's got to do is just make it simple and go tackle the exactly. ball. Exactly. And that's what he did there. 
Brings up second down and 11 for Shenandoah. You got twins right, I formation in the backfield. They'll run a little bit. Good job. Well, I tell you what, now that was one heck of a job by Gabe Gordon fighting off that blocker. I tell you what, Matt, they pulled a couple linemen back, and Gabe went up against one of them 300 pounds linemen and uh, just set him off, and that's why he's an all-state defensive player. Yep. Plus, there's a flag on the play. And some Rose Central Seminole down on the field. Looks like Dimmerling from one that's down on the field. So a fine defensive play there by Gordon. Like we said earlier, he was an all-state safety, as I'm sure you're aware of. He was asked to move up to linebacker position this year. He's done an excellent job. You know, he's got the speed. He's got pretty good size. And uh, he's got that knack for always being around the football. Dimmerling gets up. Looks like he's all right. Looks like he's a bit, little, little bit more mad than he is hurt, Andy. Right. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, even on his two uh, plays, big defensive stops there, Shando's still going to come out and hit you. Oh, there's a, yeah. lot, a lot of black jerseys going the wrong direction, but a couple black jerseys was able to step up and make two big plays here. So it brings up third and about 11. And that was a holding call on Shenandoah, but it uh, refused by Monroe Central. So Seelock, uh, I believe he's been a starter for, uh, well, he's a three-year letterman, so he can't get the ball. He can't make the plays in the air. Nice play. Nice play there by Sean George. I think, no, I'm sorry, Graham. Number 22. That's Graham. Tyler Graham in nice. there. Nice. I tell you what. Yeah, you know, we talked about last week, Andy. Tyler Graham, he's been stepping up here you know, the last last few weeks, making some big plays, had some nice runs last week. Right. Um, I believe he came from his uh, outside linebacker position for that coverage there. And really, it's one of those plays, Matt, where only three for five yards. He's well sure the first down, but good to see Tyler Graham there on the play. He, uh, he read that the whole way, too. I'd like to see a little pressure there on the punter, Matt. Hopefully... A good big special teams play might uh, give us a little momentum tonight, but uh, we don't handle the punt, which is, you know, it's all right down there like that, and we'll start out from our about 24-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, you know, so far this is the game that kind of everybody expected. Right. You know, uh, you know, here it is, nothing, nothing, 10 minutes left to go in the second quarter. Um... We didn't think it was going to be a, a real big scoring ball game. Of course, we still got a couple quarters to play. Right. But. And, uh, you know, Shenandoah, you know, looking at their past schedule, I believe they've outscored their opponents 75 to nothing in their second quarter. And that's unbelievable. So, you know, second quarter really big for the Zeps this year. But, you know, right there after giving up that first down, able to shut them down three plays in a row. And we'll go back to offense. Well, it says a lot for your defense right there, you know, shutting them down like that. Right. So after the short game there on first down, bring up second nine for the Knowles. You got uh, Dan Miller checking out and Kenny Robinson checking in. Knowles used a lot of time tonight to get their plays a line of scrimmage, but... Uh, you know, able to get him off in time out of the shotgun here. It's your roll to his right. He'll throw here to L.B. Brown Dogger, but a little bit overthrown. Over, over front. He was open, but he was open. It's tough to throw on a run like that, Matt. Especially try to throw and then put a little touch on the ball. And then all of a sudden in the back of your mind, you worry about if there's anybody coming chasing you from behind, right. you know. It's a good point. So bring up third and nine with 9.34 left to go here in the third, second quarter, excuse me. So we'll split Kenny to the left. High backfield set. Is she under center? Nice! Good catch! 
Beautiful catch. Nice throw by Ishii. Nice catch by Gordon. So we watched Gordon there. He acted like he's going to stay in the block. Then he floated out into the flat there. Ishii didn't see him at first, but gave a big target. And I'll tell you what, Andy, you know, like I said earlier, looks like Chandel is more worried about uh, our passing game than they are about a running game because Ishii didn't have any pressure on there at all. Right. And Gabe put the two hands up, grabbed the ball for a huge first down. Big play right there, big play. Little Redskin special back to the left side of the field, I believe, Matt. But he gets, well, he gets about two yards. So Gabe really not able to get anything going on the ground so far tonight. But, you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know, every time he sets in the backfield, he got a couple guys just saying, where's Gordon? Exactly. You know, which direction is he going? Where's he lined up? What so Same forth. thing from North Central. I'm sure they always want to find out where, you know, Barnett is. All right. Shotgun formation. Yes, he keeps it. Uh, just uh, Brown out there in the they had the trips to the right and just the quarterback just roll out sprint quarterback keep and uh, you know Shendo just, just did a nice job setting the blockers and Ishii really know where to run out there right he made a good play and here's from North Central face with a third down and ten and that's you know, kind of hard, but you always got to you know, wait for your third down before you get you know, another first down. Right. Split backfield. Oh! oh. Looks like, uh, I think that was Dan Miller. Dan Miller, really nice toss in there by uh, Ishii. A little bit too hard to handle there for Brown, not able, or excuse me, Miller. Not able to come up with it. Looked like he would have a little bit of room. Maybe try to get the first down after he did catch the ball, but not able to execute there. And we'll have to turn the ball over on downs. But we did uh, increase the field position there. He gave and Spillman a little bit more room to right. you know, punch the ball. And always a big part of the game, especially in a tight ball game like this. Spillman, nice height. Nice punt, nice punt. Tell you what, Matt. Get over there. Right there. Clip. Clip. There's the flag. Looks right. like a clip. About two clips from up here, Matt. Well, I saw one clip over here on uh, Eddie McConnell. So, yeah. uh, sometimes it's it almost like he got too much on the punt and the coverage didn't get down there quick enough. And then when uh, the return man got it, he had a lot of room to work. Well, got a wall set up, but when you got two clips, exactly. then <laughs> that's a lot more room. Yeah. But obviously, uh, no argument there. Pretty easy to see from up here. And I tell you, that was, that was another nice punt by Spielman. Yeah, like you said, he got some nice height on it, you know, some distance, and say what, we're looking at about a 40-yard punt there, and that's, uh, that's a big-time punt in high school yeah. level. Especially in a game like this, too. <laughs> that moves the ball way back to about, looks like the 13-yard line. So a very costly penalty for the Zaps. And I'm sure you know what you're going to get here, Matt, and that's a big dose of uh, Barnett try to get them a little bit better field position yeah. and not just Barnett but I'm sure you know the Leach boy up the middle Fumble! ball on the ground there Matt looks Please. like that looks like Chandler recovered it I was going to say uh, remember how lucky we was or not maybe luck but we was able to pounce back on the balls last week and uh, you know this week here early Shenandoah able to pounce back on a little miscue there early. Actually uh, rolled ahead for a couple yards. That'll be second and seven. I tell you, and I think if Monroe Central holds them here without getting a first down, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, saying a whole heck of a lot against this offense. Right. Nice, nice play. Nice job nice over there. The, there's we'll a, flag. a flag. little extra tricker activity, I believe, Matt. Not sure what it was. That might be on Monroe Central if I'm... We'll wait. Face, mask. face mask. Very costly penalty. It all depends if it's a five-yard penalty or a 15-yard penalty, Andy. Yeah, hard to see from up here exactly what happened. 
strong Looks effort like by the left side of the defensive line for the Knowles. Five yard penalty. And it's still second down. Right. The turn, no gain turns into a five yard gain. But I guess that's better than the uh, personal foul 15 yarder. Like you said, it'll still be second. Second about two. Clock running at about 6.20 by the time they get this play off. Sandell split to their left. Tell you what, they did a nice job. That's a nice fake. I was going to say, they did a nice job faking the no defense out. There's actually Seelock kept the ball. Shenandoah picks up the first down. So uh, I'm a little surprised it takes the to play like, or use the play like that on a second down and short. I think they just kind of try to power it up the middle right. just to get a first down. And then show that later when they really needed something. Yeah. But, um, you know, they're 6-0 and for a reason. They got good players. They got good coaching. So um, they'll come back first and 10. Knowles in their 5-3 defense. Just a little, little dive up the middle. Huge, big gain up there by uh, Cody Leach. Be about a 14-yard gain by Leach. Tackled by number 20, Sean George. So, uh, yeah, nice job there by the Zepp offensive line. Nothing fancy, just pull back through about the three hole. And uh, I believe Ishii's either either bleeding or... No, nah, I think it's, he's... Uh, yeah, he's uh, got what they call a stinger. It's just kind of the temporary thing. I think it's in his left shoulder. Uh, doesn't, doesn't act like he wants any medical attention, but it be interesting to see as we watch down here how bad he is hurt well, hopefully not bad at all I see nice no, job oh, nice play oh yeah nice play by Andy McConnell huge play I tell you what you can't ask for, for a, a better uh, play uh, you know than what Eddie just had right there basically just, just threw off his block and you know was standing right there in the hole and I tell you what as a ex lineman and this is a football <laughs> player. You gotta love that right oh, there. Oh yeah. Just, just took care of his man, threw him away, and hit the run on his tracks, and he was down. And I'll tell you what, you know, coaching Eddie last year, you know, I mean, he's a strong kid, you know. So yeah. Maybe I'll get him fired up, Matt. I hope so. He definitely like that every play. Screen. I watch the screen here. Going deep. Go deep. Nice, nice job. Play. Nice play by Kenny Robinson. His man had him beat by maybe a step, but Kenny with his uh, with his height and you know with his leaping ability jumped up and knocked the ball away. Right. I yeah. tell you what, Kenny's got a lot of confidence out there. You know, a lot of years you're always worried, and I think the players even worried. But if you don't have confidence on the football field, you're not going to get the job done. Kenny carries himself with a lot of confidence, and uh, you know, looked like he had a step, was able to recover. And reach that long arm out there and knock it down. And initially, I thought they were trying to set up a screen to their left. Well, and we did what, get a lot of pressure, but broke it up. Kenny, they, Kenny's come a long way since you know, he started playing. He's using that uh, basketball skills. Right. To his exactly ability right. there. So, Ishi back on the field. Defensively for the nose. See you off a row. And he'll be down! Oh! No! <laughs> yeah. What a hit! <laughs> Who was that? That was Curtis, Curtis Perry. Jeez, the Matisse. What a hit. Nice defense by Monroe Central. I tell you what, I believe Eddie McConnell got something started yes, there. Yes, he did. Yeah, we got the black jerseys puffed up. Now, I tell you what, if that doesn't get these fans fired up, then nothing will. Tell you what, I got chills right now just thinking <laughs> about it. But I tell you what, you take that same attitude and the same tenacity and aggressiveness to the offensive line, We'll get something going then here on offense. Yeah, we're in business then. Nice right. high punt by Shenandoah. Fumbles the ball. Ishi fumbles, but looks like Sean George jumped on it. So, uh, or is that no. Brown? I'm sorry. 
Aaron Brown jumped on the ball. It's a really nice punt with a lot of height on it. Exactly what they probably wanted there. And, you know, a lot of a lot of pressure on a young football player to try to make that catch with the, you know some white jerseys breathing down his neck. And sure it is. So just able to able to get on it was uh, LB there for the Knowles. So Graham will be in there at offense, number 22, and we'll see where he lines up there, Matt. He's lined up in there beside Gordon at halfback. So Ishi just on a little keep, or like an option keep there, and he'll be upfield for about like a three, three and a half, four yards. About three yard gain. So Monroe Central, I believe, with uh, two timeouts left and uh, about 3.50 left on the clock here before the first half. Monroe Central, wishbone formation, split right. Yes, he's going to throw it on the fade pattern. Yeah, he's going to. Oh! Oh, our number 44 from Shenandoah slip. And I'll tell you what, if that would have been on the money, Andy, that would have been six. Yeah, Kenny still be running right now, but, uh, you know, that play is the timing pattern. If he tries to throw it up, he counts on Kenny to run underneath of it and just maybe a yard or so off there. But, you know, uh, 44 is Maz Gay, pretty good size, but I'm sure they're trying to use Kenny's size to his advantage. Yeah. Especially like I said, the jumping ability. Yeah, Mazgay slipped, and you know that that would have been six. But hindsight's 2020. You know, here we go again. If she keeps it, the flag on the play is probably going to be against the Nerve Central, Andy. For them to stop the play. Legal procedure on the Knowles. Looks like somebody turned up field a little bit too soon. So we'll uh, take they'll take us back about five yards. Leave us with about a third and 12. And I got to be careful here, Matt. If we do put the ball in the air, just to make sure that uh, Ishi is sure that you've got an open receiver, don't want to make any mistakes here. You know, we had a fine defensive effort and don't want to give Shenandoah any uh, momentum if we can't pick it up, you know, to, to let them have better field position for the second half. Not a lot of room, and I thought he grabbed the face mask in there, Matt, but it looked like it to me, too, Andy, but uh, that's not the case. Maybe it was just a shoulder pad to their jersey, but no time in there for Ishi. Um, I know on the uh, pass play we don't fire out, but we look a little bit slow there on that play and not able to give Ishi any time. Uh, right. Bring it up fourth and 14, and we sure could use one of them Billman Boomers now. Yeah, we sure could. Hopefully have a good snap here, which it is. He gets off a, he gets off a decent kick, and Shando helps us big time by not catching the ball. That took a good hop. That took him a nerve central bounce right there. Right. It was going towards the sidelines and hitting and bounce towards the middle of the field. So after the roll, about a 45-yard net on the play, and that's where Shando will start out with about 2.45 left on the clock. And I believe they get all three of their timeouts left. Yeah. And like we said earlier, T-Lock's been a quarterback over there for, I believe, four years. At least a four-year letterman, three-year quarterback. And uh, and I'm sure they'd like to get something before this half. Like yeah. Nerve Central kind of bunching up there in the middle, Andy. I know it's the same thing. He overthrows. I tell you what, and you know, uh, Sean Doris is like he he was beat by about you know step and a half, maybe two steps that time too. Right, they ran a crossing pattern, and uh, looked like uh, let's see, that's 15 mile. He came from across the field and ran sort of a flag pattern from the backside, and uh, sometimes. Uh, there's a little bit of crisscrossing in there, and you might lose track of your man. And then George picked it up a little bit late, but luckily overthrown a little bit by Seedock. And, uh, 
you know, we'll, we'll be glad of that, and we'll try to get some pressure on him here as his second and about ten. And don't try to slip a little kind of a trap play there, wasn't it, Andy, or like a delay, like a little delayed draw, a little bit of a trap there, but didn't fool the Noles defense because they held their ground. Stopped Barnett for about a yard. <coughs> The clock stopped right now, Matt. I'm not sure why. Out of the chance to take a timeout. Yeah, okay. okay. It's a official timeout that uh, kept, kept the clock stopped. It really helped Shenandoah, really. But L.E. with third and nine. And they'll really take a nice job by Sean Aidy in there. Tell you what, turn off, turning his man off, and, and going in after the tackle. Nice pursuit. Talked to Eddie all week out there. He's primed for a big game, and uh, he came alive last week, big time, and that big effort. And uh, right there again tonight. The Sean Little surprised. Sean's having a pretty good year this year. Oh yeah. A little surprised by the play call there by the Zeps. Thought they put the ball in the air. Sure didn't want to make a mistake before half, but that'll give us the ball back for some time. And with a good, re I tell you what, there's a lot of linemen downfield early there, Matt. Used to be, he couldn't. Come on! Get out! 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 Yeah. So exactly where it was, but as I mentioned earlier, Matt, there's a lot of white jerseys look like they left too early. Yeah. I'm sure you still have to wait. The only ones that I leave early is the center. As soon as he snaps the center, I go downfield. It used to be the uh, the outside guys, the, the gunners they used to call yeah. them or something like that, yeah. but, um, you know, may, maybe I wasn't, I'm just sure they left a little bit early, which means they can get down on coverage a little bit earlier, but we might watch that next time. And, Oh, they're really not, really not down too far this time, but a little bit of a mix-up there. And, uh, Ishii had plenty of time to throw the ball, but Kenny only about three yards downfield. He wasn't able to handle it. So will bring up second and ten with about a minute eleven to go here in the first half. Monroe Central with two timeouts left. They'll go trip to the right. Might look for uh, something in the back flat there, Matt, like we've seen earlier. Yeah, I might even look for a screen or something here. No. Across the middle of Robinson. Thanks. Nice coverage there by Shando as they'll give up a little bit in the middle of the field to keep the clock running. And then they'll call, Monterey Central will call timeout. 57 seconds left to go in the, in the half. Ishii completes across the middle for about a five yard gain. They got third and five, and they'll use one of their timeouts there. So uh, we'll see here what Coach Chacost has got in the playbook. Still a lot of time left, and I probably said I told you wrong earlier, but it still looks like we got two timeouts left. So that was just our first timeout of the night. Everything we expected, Matt. A lot of hard hitting. A lot of good defense. A lot too, of good Andy. defense. Good defense. You know, battle right there in the trenches. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose <laughs> the battle. But you know, all in all, it's just 11 on 11 in the dog fight so far. And I'll tell you, and uh, you know, uh, against a big team like Shenandoah, um, especially up front, I think uh, Monroe Central's pretty much holding their own. Right. Like they're doing a good job in there. And, you know, our quickness is always a factor, you know, against the uh, bigger teams. And, you know, we're never really going to be bigger than anybody throughout our schedule, most likely. So, well, that's what we always relied on in the past, and it was right. quickness. And I I can't remember ever really being, you know, out outweighing a team right. you know, up, up front. So that's the time out. Monroe Central will come out. In the wishbone formation, double tight set. Looks like Shandell bringing everybody up. Oh, yeah, look at him. 
Ah. So I don't know if it looked like an offside play that we well, you, tried to run. But but you can only have one man in motion at, at right. time, right? So we got some black jerseys clapping, but I'm not sure if, if we're going to get the call. Oh, we, yeah, we are. Yeah, Shenandoah. And I, you can see Coach Weston on the field out there. And, and I'll have to I'll have to kind of agree with Coach Weston. You know, you can only have one guy in motion at a time. Right. And it looks like Minerva Central had a couple. I know, we we <laughs> talked about that in Coach's office the other day because I had a question on uh, some motion for the little league level. He says, no, you can't have two guys in motion. But, exactly. you know, we're not going to change your mind. No, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? Uh, regardless, you know, these officials are human. Oh, yeah. We're just thankful they made a mistake in our favor this time. Everybody makes mistakes. But they're trying their best. They're not intentionally trying to call it one size. We'll come back first and ten. Trips right. Issue the shotgun. Yes, she's going for it on. Hey, throws it out of bounds. Really, really not open. No. Uh, Zerk on the coverage all the way. <laughs> yes, she sometimes, well, I'm not going to complain one bit. Just that time, uh, he just thought that was his best shot and took a shot there. And uh, wasn't there, but we'll go second and ten. Yeah, uh, sometimes, you know, kids, they, they get anxious and they, they want a touchdown. They kind of get impatient. And, uh, yeah, maybe that's kind of what Josh did there. He said that he's, he's wanting to score before half. But he threw, it, he threw it in a place where nobody was going to get it, yeah. really. But that, was, that was kind of, a, in a way, kind of a smart play, Andy. Right. Monroe Central comes out and trips again. Throws it across the middle. It's uh. intercepted by Shenandoah. Get over there. He wants somebody to come over and put a big lick on him. And there's a penalty flag now. Looks like number 50, Jeffers, coming over to make the big tackle. I'd like to know what the penalty was. Maybe clipping? I, I'm not sure. Personal, Personal foul, foul, foul on Central. Goals. So exactly what we didn't want was an interception, a nice return, and then tacking on 15 yards of that. Not sure what happened. We'll probably find out later sometime, but don't have it for you now. I don't know if our spotter had seen anything or not. Um, but if he just over 30's target, um, Kenny Robinson across the middle of the field. And number six, uh, Nathan Zirkle. Jacob Zirkle, nice return. Uh, one of the spotters up here believes that, uh, the personal foul was a spear. Used his head, led with his head, and very dangerous play. And that gave Shen uh, Shenandoah that 15-yard personal foul penalty. You see Locker go deep. He throws that ball up. And it Intercepted! Works. I'll tell you what. Kind of a gift coming back to us. That ball well underthrown. Shenandoah, the receiver, had, some, uh, had a lead on us. But the ball is under center and we're able to pick it off. So after a mistake-free, turnover-free ball game, it's back-to-back -back interceptions. Well, people are getting their money's worth tonight, Andy. Right. And with 29 <laughs> seconds left, Matt, I believe that Coach Acosta is not going to take any chances here. And unless Shenandoah calls timeout, we'll just run the ball up the middle and just try to hold on to it. Quarterback keep. Shando uh, will use a timeout. Really, Matt, that's probably a smart thing to do. The, cu the center quarterback snap should be automatic, but you never know in a big game. So you might as well use them uh, timeouts but, and make it at least snap it. Exactly. Because you can't carry them over the second half, right. so you might as well use them when you can. So uh, that's the big interception by Zirkel. Who, who was the interception, Matt, for us? Who caught that I, ball? I really couldn't make it out from, from up here, and he was put down the corner of the end zone. Um, I you know, really couldn't make it out. I, you know, if it would have been a safety back there, everybody would have been Sean George. Kenny Robinson, Kenny Robinson making the interception, okay. 
So a nice job in there by Kenny. Take a look around the field here, Matt, as we got a little bit of a break. I I see the hillside full and the sidelines are packed, you know, three people deep all the way around the fence in the infield there. Now, this is one of the bigger games in the in the valley this, this right. weekend, Andy. With uh, River playing tomorrow and uh, Bellsville playing down at Fort Fry. I'm sure a lot of them fans are here. And uh, got a couple couple buddies of mine even come all the way over from St. Clairsville to see this ball game. So everybody here tonight, see a good ball game. So Gordon up the middle. Chandel Coates, another timeout. Gordon up the middle for about a five yard gain and like we talked, Matt, they're gonna they're gonna make them snap and they're gonna make them punt if they can. And then I'm sure they're gonna bring the pressure. With uh, still one timeout left, Monroe Central's got a third and three. So hopefully, you know, we run some some sort of a uh, you know play to get a first down, keep us out of a playing formation because a lot of pressure to get a punt off on uh, deep in your territory. And I'm sure they'd be sending all 11 guys. Like I said, Andy, this you know this is a key first down right here. We can right. pick up the first down, and those timeouts, you know, we're just basically I don't want right. to say wasted, but used for nothing. And I tell you, you know, so far Coach Sherman ought to be you know pretty happy with the way his defense has been playing. You know, oh uh, yeah, I believe uh, that check here at halftime on the stat guy, but. Uh, probably even on first downs. Five or six apiece for most squads. Gordon, All he right. picked up a first down. So nice job in there by Gordon in the Monroe Central line. As he'll stop the clock just momentarily to reset the chains. And we'll probably just let the clock run out now. As Gabe picked up a big first down, and they will run, run to let the clock run out. And after a hard fought first half here at Woodsfield, it's still 0 0. Good, good first half, and on both sides of the ball. I tell you, you know, North Central kept up with them, and, uh, you know, it, it evenly fought, uh, you know, first half, and I think. Uh, the second half is going to be even better. So after uh, both bands play for the halftime break, we'll be back after that. For your convenience and peace of mind, Amera Drive by Stark offers team driver education in these locations. Woodsfield, St. Clairsville, Wintersville, Martins Ferry, New Philadelphia, Marietta, Harrison Central, and Buckeye Local. Three weeks of classroom study is held on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings. State licensed and certified by the Ohio Department of Public Safety, Ameridrive has been teaching teens and adults to drive for 20 years. Eight hours of one-on-one -on -one behind the wheel instruction is scheduled at convenient times. Call Ameridrive by Stark at 1-800-YOU-DRIVE-2. The Citizens National Bank of Woodsfield, home-owned and independently operated since 1933. Your community bank. Our officers, directors, and staff are dedicated to customer and community service. We reinvest your deposit dollars locally. So remember, banking with us is not only good for you, but it's good for your community. Citizens National Bank of Woodsfield, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm not buying till I check down for when it comes to the regular maintenance of your Ford Lincoln or Mercury, come to the service department at Doan Ford. From oil changes and brake work to alignments and major repairs, the service department at Doan's has state-of-the-art equipment and factory-trained technicians to keep you on the road. And for all types of body work, remember, Doan Ford's Collision Center is a direct repair shop for all major insurance companies. I'm not fine till I check Doan Ford. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
McDonald's of Woodsfield is not just great food and lots of fun, it's a vital part of our community. Paula and Dell strongly believe in supporting our kids, both in school and in extracurricular activities. That's why McDonald's is proud to be the exclusive halftime sponsor for the Monroe Central Seminoles. They're happy to support our players, our cheerleaders, and our band. After the game, celebrate at McDonald's of Woodsfield, where we love to make you smile.
McDonald's of Woodsfield is not just great food and lots of fun, it's a vital part of our community. Pearl and Dell strongly believe in supporting our kids, both in school and in extracurricular activities. That's why McDonald's is proud to be the exclusive halftime sponsor for the Monroe Central Seminoles. They're happy to support our players, our cheerleaders, and our band. After the game, celebrate at McDonald's of Woodsfield, where we love to make you smile. New name, same great service. Ormet Credit Union is now Ohio Valley Community Credit Union. Visit us in our new facility in Hannibal, built with more convenient parking and easier drive through If you live, work, or attend school in Belmont or Monroe County, you are eligible for membership in the Ohio Valley Community Credit Union. To serve you better, we also have locations in St. Clairsville and Clarington. Ohio Valley Community Credit Union. Community is our middle name. Hi, I'm Bill Respect. You heard me talk many times about how we offer you the best variety at the best possible price every day. And we do it with no cards, no gimmicks, no hassle. Just like you, we're working to get the most we can for the money we spend. So if these things are important to you, come home to Respect. We'll even add customer service as we continue what Grandma started over 70 years ago. No matter what the weather is, you can work out year-round at Transforming Physiques. For your convenience, new owner Kristen Rossiter has extended the hours. Students have the opportunity to work out before school, after school, or on Saturdays. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, come out at 6 a.m. and get your exercise in before going to work. Adult, student, and family memberships are available. They now have two tanning beds and stock the best of tanning supplies. Stop out to see a large variety of sports drinks, diet bars, supplements, vitamins, and sports attire. Now is the time to start transforming your physique. For over 100 years, Bauer Turner Furniture has been serving our community with quality furniture and bedding. After a big day, kick back and relax in a dual recliner sofa, or choose from living room suits featuring couches with comfy armchairs or matching recliners. Then pick the perfect coffee table and tables and lamp to suit your personality. Of course, they stock bedroom furniture to please the country, traditional, or contemporary decorator. Kitchen tables and chairs, hutches, entertainment centers, and more can be delivered to your home this week. So stop by Bauer Turner Furniture today. Okay, here we are, second half. Monroe Central nothing, Shenandoah nothing. And uh, Andy, I'll tell you what, a uh, whole new ball game now. Monroe right, Central that. doing a heck of a job on defense the first half. Of course, Shenandoah doing, you know, kind of you know, matching them. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, like I said, one of the big games in the Valley. Uh, and Monroe Central, you know, you know, as far as weight wise, of course, you know, they're uh, well behind Shenandoah, you know, as, uh, matching up uh, evenly, you know, but uh, so far, Monroe Central, you know, holding their own. Right, Matt, very fine first half. Most teams about the same success on the ground, about equal first down. We'll start the ball, we'll start the half on defense. Our goal, as always, is three and out. It seems, seems to be fine after that stinger there in the second quarter. A little bit concerned there, but I believe he'll be fine. Uh, the key to the second half, obviously, will be not to turn the ball over, penalty-free football. I'm sure Coach has got a few things he'd like to try. He didn't show in the first half, as well as Shenandoah the same way. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we run a little bit more of a counter or misdirection-type plays. Or even maybe even just a you know a screen or you know you know something like that, Andy. Right. I don't even think I don't think we ran a screen all year, have we? No, I wasn't able to make it for a few ball games, but uh, games I've saw, I haven't seen a screen yet. So Merrick, Curtis Merrick will tee it up for the Knolls at the 40-yard line. Zirkel is deep for the Zeps. So Merrick having success. 
early in this season with, uh, you know, getting the ball down around the goal line. I don't know how he's really going to try to kick it here, and if he's going to try to kick it, you know, so it's uh, hard to return or, you know, kick it right at him. Only seen one kick off tonight, and that was the opening kickoff. And uh, Shenandoah did give us some sort of a squib, and we'll see what Merrick does here. He'll boot the ball. Pretty good kick. He'll feel it down about the six-yard line. And coverage down deep there. We got a little got extra a penalty pressure. down here. Number 57 and number 87 tangled up here right in front of us, Matt. And that's Jared Ward. Now, I'm not sure what they're going to call here, Andy. It's holding on to Shenandoah, maybe. They're well away from the play. Holding to Shenandoah. Great, very silly penalty, Matt, for the Zap. Well, thing about 30, 40 yards away from the ball. Exactly. I mean, this, uh, Ward had no, no, uh, uh, thing on the play here, you know, had nothing to do with it, and here's the guy down here, you know, holding him. I mean, that's just. I <laughs> uh, just laughed at one of our spotters up yeah, here. Yeah, uh, a little, little right humor. Now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> now, we'll put our game faces back on <laughs> now, man, because we've got to play defense. And we'll line up in a pretty tight 5 3 set. We'll send Gordon up the middle, and he'll try to. Knock Leach off his feet, but Leach upfield for about a five-yard gain. Excuse me, that'd be Barnett on the carry for about six yards. The Monroe Central lined up in a five-three, but it was a linebacker stepped up with guessing run. They were right, but uh, Shando able to get a nice pickup on first down. Second and four for the Zeps. Nice and play, nice play in there. Good job. You look, look how many black jerseys are on that pile, I'll tell you Matt. what, I see at least eight in there, Andy, on top of him. And that's, yeah. that's what you need right there. Right. He was a big boy. He once Barnett left his feet, he was at his disadvantage. And then the former black jerseys come over there and caved in on him for just a two-yard gain there. That'll bring up third and about two and a half for the Zepp. So, uh, got Ferg in there at defensive end. Hadn't seen a lot of Stephen Havick tonight. I don't know, it's, it's uh, it's, I don't know if Zimmerling's still hurt, Andy, or uh, I'm trying to look for him on the sideline. Well, I'm, uh, Shando has to burn out, burn off a uh, Time out here early in the third quarter. Not sure if they didn't get the right people in or just really wanted to, you know, get a first down here and make sure they had the right play called. But they did burn a timeout. And that could, you know, later on in the game, that could be kind of costly. <coughs> Especially in close, close, excuse me. <coughs> Especially in a close ball game like this, Matt. You know, a lot of people at halftime wondering what the score will be at the end of regulation, you know, with the 0-0 score here at half. As the weather gets a little bit cooler, ball may be a little bit harder to handle. Football gets a little stiff <laughs> on, on these <laughs> evenings. So we'll line up in a 5-3 defense. Linebackers couple yards off the line of scrimmage. And Seeloff will roll. Uh, he'll find a little room. And a missed tackle there. Oh. Seeloff's a nice athlete. And he showed his ability there as he scrambled up through the middle for a first down. So really, Jando come out on third down and uncharacteristically uh, showed that they was going to pass and uh, spread us out and then see Lock able to find some room up the middle. As Sean George comes off the field a little bit limp and I looked over there on the other side of the field, didn't know if he slipped yeah, he could have twisted just, something. Might have twisted an ankle. We got Tyler Graham in for him. Uh, 
tell you what, Barnett Hughes showed a little bit of his power there. As actually ran over a couple black jerseys and up the field for one of his biggest games of the night, really. Yeah. And of course, there wouldn't have been. Kenny Robinson, the uh, missed that tackle. He hit him too high like we had talked before, right. Andy. And uh, you can't hit a, a big guy like that high. you got to hit him low. Well, another thing is you got to hit and wrap. And if he's got to drag you, he's got to drag you. But you hit and wrap, and then you wait for some help. Exactly. Just hold on. That's easier, uh, you know, said, especially from up here. Ball. Fumble. So somebody got a hand in there. I believe knocked the ball. Oh, Rio set to recover. <laughs> Just about ready to say, Matt. Stando got something going on the ground. And yeah, Black Jersey stuck a hand in there and stripped the ball. Well, like I said earlier, Andy, the way you know we're tackling the you know, big guys, we're trying to strip the ball, and right uh, there, you know, it pays off for us. Yeah, the only thing wrong about that when you're trying to strip the ball, and you got to make sure you have the, the one arm around them, right? Just in case you can't strip it, so you can't tackle them. So we talked about uh, mistake-free football early in the second half. Shando starts out with a 15-yard penalty, which cost him for a moment. And then, you know, the fumble here was, you know, really, they had something going there, so this is going to cost them. Monroe Central not happy with what they're seeing here. So, looked like they lined up out there with only 10 players that had to burn a timeout. And every down's important, obviously, in a close game like this. And I know we say it over and over about this close, jet, uh, close game and how important everything is, but that is the truth. You can't afford... Any mental mistakes. And uh, so we had to burn one there as well as Shenandoah did earlier. And do you know what well as I do, Andy, that uh, football is uh, just as much mental as it is you know, physical. Yeah, there's an old saying there, football is actually two parts mental and one part physical because, you know, you have to get yourself mentally prepared to game. And then mentally you have to know your plays. And then, of course, there's the physical aspect yeah. after that. And so. it, it's harder to get yourself ready mentally than it is physically. So Monroe Central after burning the timeout comes out wing left. Actually a pretty wide wing as they lined up. It, yeah! 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 Nice play! Beautiful! I tell you, we look at that wing. He's a little bit far off the ball for a wing. And then they reversed back, and I believe that was Miller. I mean, excuse me, uh, Brown well, Dog, who let the pass go. Well, Andy, I don't know if you can remember, if you was here for the Buckeye Trail game, that was basically the same play that we scored the first touchdown on against Buckeye Trail. So Monroe Central puts a big, big score on the board. I'll tell you what, Matt, uh, you talk about the play calling there, you think they're waiting to run it, waiting to run it, waiting to run it. And then they, they tell themselves, well, this is the time to run it. And, uh, you know, a little bit of pressure on there when Brown, as he threw it, but uh, he kicks it in for the hip support. And I'll tell you, Andy, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time that Shannon Zoe has been behind all year. I'll tell you what, Coach fired up on the field. Uh, offense, fans are going wild here at Woodfield. Huge play. Nice, nice play, nice call by Coach Cross on that. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, any when, when Brown was getting ready to throw the ball, I mean, he really didn't have a hand on it. I think he just basically <laughs> palmed it right. and just started, you know, threw down the field. And thank God he had enough power behind I'll it. I tell you what, uh, if he was carrying around high school football, and if you get away from the game a little bit, and I coach fifth and sixth grade football, and we use a smaller ball, you don't realize how big that high school ball is. Especially when you're not a big kid in your hands. Right. Like that, and I'm thinking, he did one heck of a job getting that ball <laughs> off and then getting something on it. And the play covers about 55 yards. Catch and reception and run afterwards is uh, is Miller. Well, i tell you what, Miller uh, escaped one would-be tackler and then took it on in for the big score. We ought to start calling him LB do it all brown. <laughs> i tell you what. <laughs> i tell you what, we watched him for years playing the shadow of the Wilsons, 
and Gordon and some other great backs just waiting for his opportunity. And I and his brother, of course, and you knew all along when he finally got his chance he was going to make the most of it. We always knew what he had it in him, and you know, right. he's, he's really showing it this year. So, you know, you talk about the zero, zero time. Just like that, Coach comes up with a little, you know, reverse pass, and uh, Sando stepped up, and we got behind him. And nice kick. Look at that. Yeah. Nice. You can't, you can't bring it you out. You can't run it out. Tell you what, <laughs> we're down here getting bad on. And I tell you what, there's a little bit of adrenaline there. I tell you, Monroe Central is fired up. And like I said, you know, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time Shandow's been down all year. Right. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. And let's see how, uh, like, see how Shandow bounces back. Right. But like we said, Monroe Central, their adrenaline's going, so uh, it, it, it's, it's going to be tough. Defensively, you got to be a little bit careful that you don't over-penetrate here. You know, you're pumped up. Fans are loud here. you got to still play your, uh, you know, your gap. You got to take your one yard cross line scrimmage and try to find the ball and make the tackle. So, exactly. wouldn't be surprised if Shandell tries a little bit of a. Uh, well, they, they're going to want to try to get this score back quick. Yeah, but. To make it an even game again. So, really, just what Shandell needed was something to quiet the crowd down. Yeah. That's exactly what they got. And uh, he started 20. He'll be just across the 30 for a Shando first down. Like I said, you know, Monroe Central needs to, you know, it's, it's good to be pumped up. And they need to kind of settle down here again to kind of, you know, you know, like we said earlier, you know, you know mentality, mentally, right. you, they need to settle down. Right. And, Yeah, no split, no luck, right a little bit back, and tell you what, Barnett's running hard in there, but hit after uh, about a two-yard gain. That'll bring up now. I'll tell you what, he got a little bit more than I thought there, Matt. Now he got about, look, we got about four or five, and so nice job in there by Barnett. Tell you what, you know, senior-led group over there by Shenandoah, I mean, like you said, probably the first time they've been down all year, they're probably saying in the huddle, hey, you know, it's just get back to the basic football like we know how to play football and just try to shove it down their yeah. throat here. And they got some studs over there, obviously. Oh, sure they did. So Brown giving out some orders there, and that'll be George Sinichi out to our right. Oh, offside. Be number 15 that's, over there. That's a Kirby Miley right there. Costly penalty. <laughs> and that'll get our fans back into a little bit. Really no excuse. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, not, not bragging because I'm, you know, like we're from Woodsville, but you can't ask for better fans than what we have here at Monroe Central. Oh, year in, year out, Matt, you're exactly right. I mean, you could tell just coming down Eastern Avenue tonight, all week, really, all the signs in the yards, all the Seminole flags hanging from the telephone poles. Now, I tell you, football season just really lights this town up, too, oh, you know. Yeah. So, I'll bring up second and ten after the penalty. The depth will go twins to their left. He lost it. Well, flag on the play. Dead. dead ball foul. Delay a game. Delay a game. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh... Shenandoah's kind of helping us out here, Matt. Really are. They come back after the huge, um... Touchdown, and they got 10 yards on their first down play. And then after that, two consecutive, you know, really no excuse for them type of penalties right now. And that'll take a first or a second five back to a second and 15. They'll come back in that same formation for the third time. Where's our defensive end at? Tell you what, Seelock rolls to his left. Yeah. Somebody come across here and about took his head off. It looks it. like uh, well, Sam Miller was on the Miley oh, coverage. So that's Miley there upfield for about eight yards. So really, you know, if you want to think about it, that's a good play by Sam though. It's just getting half of it back yeah. after those two penalties. Instead of getting trying to get it all back at right. one time. Bring it up and easier to man yeah. third and seven. Might look for Seelock. What, what they roll out again, maybe the wide side of the field. Got 
Come back yeah, got to get some players in late here. The same formation as before, Andy. See if our defensive ends do a good job. And they got a fight out. You got a fight out there. You got all kinds of time. Ah, oh. oh, jeez, the way. Well, just like you said, Matt, just got too much time back here. And eventually, number six, Jacob Circle, able to find some room out to his right and a uh, big play. Coaster <laughs> Coaster Costa downfield screaming about something. I think he's screaming about some holding penalties or something, but I'll tell you what, when he sees something, he's pretty emphatic about it. Well, I tell you, I'm Andy, sure he's right. On a play like that, Andy, and you know, you was, you know, being a lineman, it's kind of hard on it when you scramble like that for somebody not to hold. Right. You know, for him to have that much time, you know, back there. Right. I tell you what, um, Seahawks made a nice play. Zirkle kept coming across the field, trying to find that open pocket. And he did a nice job. Draw. Tell you what, that's tough to cover, but uh, Dan Miller did a nice job out there hitting in the uh, Hitting the tight end or hitting the wing there, and then he's got to he's got to play contain and play pass, then to hope for his help there in the flat. Kind of leaves him out there all alone, but he's got you know still his job is contain. And uh, Seelock and Barnett just not able to execute on that. Well, that's one thing about Seelock, you can't let him out around the end. Our, our defensive ends have to keep him inside, right? And, and wait for our linebackers to come up and you know for but help. But as the uh, defensive ends tend to string things out. We got to have that flow defensively to cover as soon as he turns it in. Sandell will pull guard on a little bit of a quick trap. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kenny come in there and threw his shoulder in, you know. You don't hit and wrap like we want to, but against the big guy there, he's able to knock him down. <laughs> Barnett was actually uh, stumbling a little bit time he got to Kenny, but nice job there by Kenny. Brings up third down and about four for Chandos Zepp. You know, again, Matt, uh, with this type of size, you know, and this type of field position they're in right now, we're looking at maybe four down territory. Yeah! Oh! Tell you what, about the same play they ran on first down. And that's Cody Leach out there in the flat. Just Seminoles seemed to guess right. And then when Steve Rock uh, kept the ball, he's able to roll out from contain there. Like I said, Cody, Cody Leach out in the flat. Up inside a little bit right. too much. And so nice, nice execution there by the Zeps. And really overcome a couple of mental mistakes there. And got this drive going. And they'll be first and 10 uh, down at the Seminole 25 yard line. So they've got to regroup a little bit. Try to, try to keep it to a minimal game here on first down. Yeah, nice job. Right up, well, Eddie McConnell in there again. So hitting the backfield, and Barnett still goes ahead. Or, excuse me. He just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe even lost a half a yard. So just yeah, like we talked about, keeping them to a minimal game on first down brings up second and about ten and a half. See now, you know, all of a sudden Ken Doe's, you know, with their backs to the ball, they're trying to play catch up ball now. Right. Come out that formation. We got twins left, eye formation. The pull out rolls out. Completes his pass for about maybe I'd say probably about a five yard gain. So Miley over there, and a lot of times, you know, you don't think you, you like to run a lot of plays to the short side of the field, but right there shows that you do have room, and sometimes you might overprotect the wide side, but then they come back to the short side, and then they find a nice little five yard gain there to Miley, just right on the sideline. So nice job again by the Zep offense, and certainly Matt. Unless they've got some kind of a kicker that we don't know about. This four down territory. And they'll, they'll split number seven, Jamie Smith, wide to their left. Looks like he's short, Andy. So just a little fake up the middle of the fullback, and then the, the quarterback just followed him right up right. the hole. So 
nice little play there, really, Matt. You know, because you think, well, you got to stop uh, Cody Leach. And then, uh, and then Cody turns into your blocker, yeah. and then T-Lock follows him up through the hole. So bring up about fourth. Kind of, kind of interesting to see what uh, what Chan does when they right. try to run one of their big horses up the middle to get a first down. I'll or? tell you what, you know, you brag about your size, and if you're a Shenandoah and Zep fan, you'd expect nothing else. Mudrow Central, they'll still keep their five down lineman with the linebackers up short there. They'll get the ball to Barnett. He, he picks up the first and down. And he'll get the first down. So Monroe Central initially with a good stand there on the line of scrimmage, but uh, Barnett kept the leg drive and uh, veered to his left and was able just to get that first down. Now I'll tell you, Chandoa, after those, those uh, two costly penalties they had, they're just basically driving the ball right. straight down the field. So, not that they needed a wake-up call, but definitely they said, let's get her done, boys. And they got in the huddle, and they come right down the field here on us. A couple 300-pounders in there, like we noted earlier, leading the charge. Barnett, tackled by Gabe Gordon and Sean 80. Took up about, looks like about maybe four yards on the play. To bring up about second down and six. Tell you what, Matt, uh, that's when, uh, you know, a team like this is so dangerous because they, they got a few guys they can go to, so you just can't key on Barnett. Barnett now is a lone setback, and they'll give the ball to him, and I tell you what, he's, he's running up, hard. Looks like he picked up another first down. Nice size hole on his left side of the line of scrimmage, and Tell you what, he, he ran over some people there. So that'll be first and goal. From down about the, about the one and a half, two yard line. So I'm sure you're going to come straight at us, Matt. Just have well, to hold your ground. Do the best you can. Don't let C-Lock keep off. Oh, I think they caught him down, Andy. Yeah, they stopped his forward. Wait a second. Wait yeah. a second. You got one referee spot in the ball, and you got another one sitting on a touchdown. I was going to say, we can't hear a whistle from up here, Matt. But Well, the one referee from over on our sidelines, then he went up to spot the ball. Yeah, I was going to say, up worse. Yeah. Uh, it will stand as a touchdown, Matt. As Steve Love kept the ball, kept his legs, or excuse me, legs driving. And we thought maybe we stopped his forward progress, and he rolled off in the end zone for the Zep score. So a very important extra point. Snaps high. Oh, oh, no! Yes, beautiful! Good job in there. That's Sam Miller. I'll tell you what, Andy. Something like that can come, can come back to bite you. I'll tell you what. Just like we talked about over the years, how our extra points sometimes come back to haunt us. Uh, Miller did, did, you know, his head wasn't down after giving up this, you know, at, probably about the first or, uh, score against the varsity all year, really, except for the kickoff return. He was able to get a lot of penetration in there and laid out and blocked the extra point. Snap was a little high, took the holder a little bit of time to get her down. And a huge play by, I believe, Sam Miller there. So 149 left to go in the third quarter. It's Monroe Central 7, Shenandoah 6. It'll be uh, Brown Dogger, Gabe Gordon, and uh, Seidler. Seidler back deep for the Red, or excuse me, Seminoles. <laughs> I wore my Woodfield Redskins shirt to school today, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> So little uh, momentum taking off the uh, Shendo score there with the blocked extra point. But still plenty of time left to go tonight. And they'll squib another one. Gordon will pick it up around the 20-yard line. And he'll get the ball, pretty nice return up to about the 34-yard line. Well, 
minute 43 left to go in the third quarter. North Central 7, Shenandoah 6. And uh, very interesting football game so far. Under Central will line up in their uh, Liz formation, the shotgun, and they'll be issue keeper. We'll get a block on the end. I'll tell you what, we see a little speed of the Zeps out there. As, as Zerk will, comes out there and grabs the issue from the collar there and drags him down. And Josh, is pretty, he's pretty quick, and uh, for right. Zerk to be closing in on right. yeah, that, that fast. Oh, you run a Liz formation like that, you got every, you got you know uh, the, the wing and the split end to the, to the left and then you got your tight end to the right and then you hope your fullback and your tight end could get a few blocks out there so Ishi can turn the corner but uh, Zirk will come up nice and stop Ishi for a, only a four yard gain nice job Dan Miller nice catch he picks up the first down I tell you what, nice little zippy pass right across the middle there. Miller took the ball and headed one direction, and that was that field. You really like to see that, don't you, Matt? Oh, sure you do. I tell you, it looks like uh, at halftime the coaches, I'm sure they saw something the first half because they've you know, come out with a, a few different plays here in the second half. Right. I'm sure they saw some weaknesses, and uh, <coughs> which is you know, uh, Coach Briggs in the press box. I'm, you know, I'm sure he's. He's uh, spotting that out. Ah, oh, shoot. Well, that's going to be a legal procedure on us, Matt. It's going to take us back five yards. Obviously not what we wanted. Second, the first down and 15 from our own 45-yard line. So Monroe Central will break the huddle and they'll come out. And a double tight, wing right set. That's our Red Skin Specials. Merrick initially with a, a nice pull block, but not much else over there for Gordon. Is we tried that at two or three times tonight. That was not the final play of the third quarter, Andy. <laughs> From a deck to a complete house, Woodsfield Tree Value has the lumber and building materials for contractors or do-it-yourselfers. Before you go out of town, bring your plans into Troy and Mike for a free estimate. We think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Delivery is available for your project materials, too. From lumber and siding to shingles, windows, insulation, and cabinets, Woodsfield Tree Value is your source for building materials and building packages. So give Troy or Mike a call today at Woodsfield Tree Value. Since 1887, folks have trusted Woodsfield Savings Bank with their financial needs. So when you need someone to lead you with your financial decisions, come to the friendly folks at Woodsfield Savings Bank where customers count. Because of your busy schedule, we offer a drive through and night deposit box, as well as convenient parking, direct deposit, and automatic payments. The folks at Woodsfield Savings Bank truly believe that making an investment in our kids brings the biggest return to our community. Go Okay, and here we are. <laughs> Fourth quarter, 12 minutes left to play. Minerva Central 7, Shenandoah 6. And uh, it all boils down to the final quarter, doesn't it? That's right. We'll go here, second and 15. After that procedure penalty and then no gain on second or first down. Guess you'll be in the shotgun. They'll let one go. Tell you what, it's the fire strike over there, the right side of the field. I believe that's Kenny Robinson. Yeah, Kenny Robinson. Nice catch. Nice Kenny throw. Did. The big first down. To start the fourth quarter off. If he fired that by the time the, the corner stepped up and it, before the safety got over, there's that seam right there, and if he stuck it right in there. Now, I don't know if you noticed, Andy, after the third quarter when they came off the field, all the players are holding up to number four. Right. Which means fourth quarter. That's what you know, boils down to the fourth quarter. 
they really got that passing game going tonight with some uh, success with uh, Miller, Robinson, of course the trick play to Miller. And Brown was a nice game up nice the middle. Game. Nice game by Brown. We haven't seen him carry the ball too much tonight. Right. And Monroe Central really fired up the line that time. We talked earlier about some of the Zepp players, you know, with the big leads they've been playing with all year. They haven't played a lot of four-quarter football games. Yeah. Because they've had the big leads, and they play two, two and a half, three quarters. Now in the fourth quarter, you know, I'm not saying that they're winded, but that play right there looked like it really got off the ball well. Well, I tell yeah, you, Andy, them down the field. you get those big boys out there carrying all that weight around with them all four quarters, you get winded after a while. Oh, oh. I don't know, Matt. I know there's a... Just oh. This uh, combination of Jefferson Ishi fumbled snap and uh, looked like it was going to be a pass play and Jefferson stepped back and Ishi not able to get back on the ball, so... After an interception there in the second quarter, I believe that's the first fumble tonight by the Seminole offense. That's that's something we really really yeah. didn't need right now. Second time we actually put the ball on the ground, but first time that uh, the defense was able to recover. So one lost fumble, and that's a little bit of sprinkles hit the roof here or something. Uh, Barnett will be out to his right for a nice seven-yard gain. I thought it was raining, Matt. <laughs> well, that's this is another thing we don't need right now is this rain, but maybe it'd be an hard advantage. You never know. They're second down about three. It'll Barnett, be Barnett met, met. He's met right in the hole. <coughs> Tell you what, Matt, you had to like that play. Oh, Barnett. Jordan. Great play. Looks like uh, Barnett and just one of the Miller boys going right at, I believe. Let's say, oh, it's Fergie over there. Yeah, Ferguson. <laughs> so I bring up third and two. Dan Dell looks like they're spreading Rose Central out a little bit. So see Lock will roll out. First, he's got to get out there for the team. Ooh. Nice. Tell you what, it's close. Yeah, it's kind of a bad angle for us up here, but uh, he oh, picked they, up the first yeah. down. Obviously, he had it by a good bit because they're already moving the stick. So see Lock shows quickness out there. He had a lead blocker out there and was able to get enough on our defensive end as he tried to fight. But uh, Seelock only needed about two, two and a half yards and was able to move a six for another Shenandoah first down. So the first and ten for the Zeps on their own 34-yard line. He'll hand the second man through, and that's Barnett. Barnett with another nice gain on first down. And I tell you, Andy, they've been... That play right there has been their bread and butter all night. Right. Um, you know, you think out the wall, the North Central linebackers, you know, pick it up. Right. A little bit easier. It's sort of uh, Barnett. Well, it is Barnett uh, in the I formation. And then looks like he jab steps and then veers back to his, his right on that play. And, uh, you know, gives his line a chance to get those big bodies in front of the black jerseys. And, like I said, nice gain on first down. Nice play. So Gordon hit Rappy wrestling down there. It's like Gordon and Ferguson again, Andy. That's the thing about uh, this game, Matt. Been a lot of third downs. Uh, each team's have to work hard. For every bit of yardage they've been able to pick up. And 
another seven, eight yard gain by Barnett on it. Basically that same play like we talked about earlier, Matt. They're bread and butter. And uh you know, seems to be successful here. Mother Central's gotta make a stand here on first down. Just giving up entirely too much on first down. That leaves Shandoas with uh, two downs to pick up this minimal yardage. So very important here as they start their next first down series that Monroe Central holds them to a minimal game here. And Barnett, that's a little bit better job there, Matt. A little bit better on first down that time. <laughs> right. Um, we're going to keep running that until we prove we can stop it. And, uh, you know, you still talk about three, three and a half, four yards. You know, three plays like that's going to get your first down. Yeah. And, you know, right now as the clock, clock winds down, it'll be down inside of 650 by the time they snap this ball. Sarandos is going to keep hammering away at us. And just as I say that, Seahawks going to keep and roll. Come on! Yeah! The missed tackles there, Matt. Seahawks rolled to his right. Had three black jerseys around him. Showed some athletic, obviously a lot of athletic ability. And he'll take that ball into the score. About a 45-yard run by the quarterback, Keith Seahawk. Well, I tell you, uh, uh, that was, that, you know, like you said, athletic ability. Um, he did a heck of a job breaking a few tackles. And... Uh, you know, cutting across, across what we call across the grain. Right. And, uh, you know, scoring a touchdown. And uh, but that was, yeah, like you said, missed tackles. I think it was kind of poor tackling by Monroe Central. Right. I uh, I thought, well, he got that nice yardage there, but we got him there. Got him wrapped up. We'll bring him down. He kept on going for the score. So after getting the extra point blocked earlier, Shandell will go for two. The Seahawk will roll. And he'll be in. in. <laughs> Excuse me, he'll be in for the score. So it's 6.32 left to play in the fourth quarter. Shenandoah, after the huge quarterback rollout, 45 yard touchdown, converts on a two point conversion. That'll put him up by seven. Score right now, Shenandoah 14, Monroe Central 7. And Matt, you know, 632 left, two timeouts left. You don't have to get it all back here right after the kickoff. <coughs> well, you just got to be patient. And, uh, yes, yeah, that's one thing about Jay. Um, you know, he'll, he, he knows um, you know, how to be patient and how to, how to work the ball down the field. And, right. And you know what, there's a good call in there by Shandell. You know, we talked up here, why don't they run Barnett until we stop him? And then they kept hammering away at us. And then all of a sudden, we're thinking Barnett again. D-Lock keeps. You know, but you, but, but you hate to give up big plays when you were there to make a stop. Yeah. And that's what seemed to happen there on that play. Is, yeah, we we going to give up a few more yards than we wanted to, but downfield there, you know, if we make the tackle... You know, we're still ahead in the game, and we didn't make the play, and, you know, good teams and good players are going to make uh, big things happen, and that's what happened there with uh, Seahawks. So, number 19, Hedge. Ooh. Tell you what. I tell you, I think the tackler took more of the punishment yeah. that time than, the, than Brownie. Brownie picked up the ball there and is hit hard by number 48, Daniel Cuckle. And I think you're right, Matt. And he's having a hard time he's, uh, walking off the field. Kind of watching up here. He's, he's a little bit shaking. Monroe Central will start right there at the 26-yard line, 27, first and 10. So a little bit of sprinkle. Try to hold on to the ball here, and we'll go look look like a power right. Gabe will get out. Gabe's still on his feet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
see no flags in the field. Oh, the player down, but no flags on the field for a huge. Just looked like a power right, Matt. Yeah. And Big Gabe, block out there. Got Gabe going, and then he bounced to the outside and broke it. He, he broke a nice tackle out there too. Right, and uh, you know, a lot of times tonight we've been not been able to get away from that corner, but a lot of room to the outside this time. Gordon's biggest run of the night thus far. And he'll still have about 23 yards on the game. Like you said, a Shenandoah player down on the field. Looks just like a cramp, and looks like a, you know, rubbing yep. it out. The coach Acosta showed right there that, you know, he, he was going to be patient. Because, yeah. you know, that's their basic Acosta football, their power right series. And uh, the game was a nice game there. Well, wait a sec, guys. We got a <laughs> Monroe Central <laughs> ready to run another play. Still got a Shenandoah man down on the field. Still, uh, still down. Like you said, Matt, I believe it's Cramp, and he's up now. And that looks like number 60. 66 maybe 68 66 Adam 66. Lee oh that's that all Ohio uh, lineman they've been talking about done a good job in there tonight with his depth interior line yeah, glad to see he's alright Matt and we get back to business here first down and 10 on our own 49 yard line a little bit heavier of a sprinkle right now Matt of course, they put the ball down on the ground there, and that actually led to their touchdown. Uh, very important that we handle the snaps, try to keep the ball as dry as we possibly can, and you know, just move the ball down the field. Gordon ready to right up the gut. Gordon running hard, low on his shoulder, and uh, been, been taking hits from Barnett all night, and uh, he's going to give a little back. Nice hard run by Gabe up the middle. I like right here, Andy. We're going to basically see what what Monroe Central is made of. Right. They seem pretty calm in the huddle. They, in the huddle. Well, you just got to they got to keep their heads, you know, no uh, no stupid penalties, and just you know, just play hard in those football. Good job to Brown. Take it around the end. Put the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. There you go. Nice moves on right there. And uh, picks up another big first down. So just a quick toss to our left. Brownie broke a tackle. And then could have went out of bounds, but darted back into the field there and picked up an extra 10. And, and the Monroe Central looks like uh, that's Robbie Dimmerling down Dimmerling the field. I don't know if you guys knee twisted again. He seems to be in a lot of pain there initially. He's probably too close to the sideline, so we'll have to hold play. Until we see what kind of injury this is. Well, I think it's because he's past the 25 yard line, Andy. Which right, is now the coach's box there. Yeah, right. So, Monroe Central uh, really uh, finally got something going here in the running game after you know not much going on early throughout the first three quarters really and for them two to, of our biggest runs of the night here on this drive and for them to run against a big team like this and he's saying a lot right so Demerling obviously limping badly I know he's had a knee problem in the past and he, he's upset about it and I'm sure he wants to be in there you know, the battle with his teammates here late in the fourth quarter. But he's taking his pads off. Gordon really hit as soon as he took the hand off. But they were able to show his athletic ability here and spin away from tackling and get upfield for about... Two yards, uh, 
nice play, and that's when obviously he made something out of nothing. Well, Gabe's one of them other you know, running backs that we always talk about Barnett. You know, Gabe's hard to bring down too. He's got some you know, a little bit of size to him, he's also got some pretty good speed. And he's not the kind of running back that goes down on the first hit. Right. The Munro Central working deep down inside. And they'll run a quick toss to Brown. And I'll tell you what. He brings a couple. Yeah! And he, I think he, he might have picked up the first down, and he's off the blue. I'll tell you what, Sandell had the white jerseys there. Just the quickness to Brown. He picks them feet, puts them, you know, picks them up, puts them down. And uh and he does he work the up field for a nice gate, I'll tell you that. So nothing fancy, Matt. Sometimes you think back here in the, on a touchdown we had to trick Shando to get the score. You know, we lined the ball up there at about the 25 yard line, a big power right, a quick toss. And you know, over the years that's exactly Jason cost the football, exactly. quick toss to the power right. That's exactly what got us down the field here. Another pitch out to Brown. Cuts up the middle. Looks like he picked up about maybe three or four yards on that. So Brown decided to turn this one up. Thought he saw a little bit of room there on the inside. Oh, looks like we got a flag. like uh, when you're outside that box then you can't block below the waist. I was going to say, uh, he didn't get outside the box, but that's what they're going to call. Um, you know, he turned that, that quick toss up in, more or less like a seven hole, but they'll take us back regardless. Don't have to say how costly that penalty is. Oh, it's very costly. Just to this late in the game. Uh, bring up first down and 23 for Noel. Watch out. Uh, Ishi is hammered in the backfield. Yeah. We see it up here, Matt. Nothing we can do about it. <laughs> Just sort of outmanned on that side of the line of scrimmage there. And he comes through unblocked and puts the shoulder into issue. Um, now may be a good time for that string we talked about. Can't pick it all up on second down. Second 31. Issue the shotgun. They'll, they'll run that screen back. We'll get some blockers. Come on, 80! Front hard! Well, we did, we, like you said, we picked some of them, you know, some yeah. of that up. I tell you what, there's a lot of room out here. Um, I'm surprised Shandow didn't call that down to, to their coaches. Watch for a screen. Maybe they did, but, you know, uh, picked up about half of that. That'll bring up third down to 15. I can hold it. Mind you, Luke. <laughs> yes, he's gone. There's a flag on the play. There's a flag on the play. Yes, he goes in motion to have a shotgun. I'm not sure what they're calling. I only see one man in motion, and that was Ishi. Well, maybe we did have two men in motion. So, little little wrinkle, little new wrinkle, as we send Ishi in motion. It looks like it was a lateral. We're just going to throw back to Ishi. I don't want to give anything away here, but that's something. That I kind of showed it, but. That's something we don't need right here, Andy. You know, right. Because it's penalty. Very uh, costly. Uh, 
tell you what, absolutely, I'm sorry, absolutely great interception in there by Shando as we tried to throw the ball up to Kenny. Never, Kenny really never got a chance to go up and battle for it. And I, uh, well, it's just, just not much to say there, Matt. Yeah. Obviously, uh, we got ourselves in a hole there after the 15 yard uh, blocking blow to the waist penalty. And then, uh, you know, the procedure penalty brought up that third down. And, you know, they knew we were going to put the ball in the air in there right there for the coverage for the. For the interception. So a minute 27 left. Monroe Central down by seven. And Barnett putting his head down. And he'll pick up 11 yards on first down. And that's basically all they're going to do here, Andy. Just yeah, give him right. the big guy up the middle and yeah, let him run the clock out. Monroe uh, Central, uh, two timeouts left. Bowed in there hard all night. Shenandoah uh, just, uh, you know, going to take their time, let as much time run up the clock as they possibly can. So down inside of 50 seconds to play now. Shenandoah to get the ball to Barnett again. He'll be wrapped up about a one-yard gain, and we'll call timeout. Uh, we talked early, Matt, about what we had to do in the second half to win this ball game. And uh, we talked about you can't turn the ball over and you can't make any mistakes. You know, what we mean by that is uh, no penalties, no turnovers. And uh, just a simple little quarterback exchange from center wasn't able to handle. You know, seemingly moving the ball downfield. And then uh, we got to turn the ball over. And then which led to their quarterback scoring from 45 yards out and then uh, on their next series just really just using the size and Barnett yeah, it's, uh, to get that second score yeah that's, that's, a, yeah, that's a good team though, when it, you had, that can capitalize on uh, on turnovers and uh, yeah, like I said Shenandoah did and um, you know, uh, not taking anything away from Central because uh, you know, it was a, a hard fought ball game for, you know, for both sides and you know, North Central coming in being underdogs, um, you know, gave Shandell, you know, pretty good run for the money. But you never know; we still got 47 right. seconds left to go. You know, uh, stranger things have happened. All right, still got one timeout left, so they still got to get their exchange of quarterback to center. And Barnett will be wrapped up. Or no, T Rock, Rock keeps keep. it. Oh, he well. picks up the first down. <laughs> He looks a little bit like Itchy as he scrambled around that left end. And was bumped out of bounds. You know, Matt, around here, uh, I'm not sure when the last time we lost a regular season game was. We didn't lose any regular season games, obviously, last year going 10-0. And probably, you know, the year before, Barnesville may have knocked us off here at home. And then, of course, we won the first uh, first six games this year. So right now, it looks like uh, Shenandoah's going to put an end to our, uh, you know, maybe 18, 19 game regular season winning streak. You know, not much to say. Our guys battled. Only gave up 14 points. Shenandoah comes in averaging probably close to 35, 40 yeah. points on the year. And. Uh, you know, still in the hunt for the uh, playoffs. This will do a lot of damage to our uh, OVHC and PVC hopes. But uh, still three games to play. Well, yeah, Andy, like I said, uh, uh, you know, a real good Shenandoah team, you know, uh, you got to give them all the credit in the world for, you know, being down and, you know, coming back. All right. And, and scoring, uh, you know, two touchdowns like he did. Um, you know, it's just, it, you know, there's really not much you can really say, you know, um, when, it, when it comes to a point like this in a ball game like, you know, like we played. Uh, I think the North Central gave them, uh, you know, everything they could tonight. And, 
A lot of bright spots in there from the North Central tonight. Oh yeah, they uh, they showed they can play with the big physical team. If we keep doing what what we're doing, Matt, there's no reason why we can't go nine and one from this point out. You know, go ahead and get into the playoffs. And then once you do get the playoffs, these are the type of teams you're going to see anyway. Exactly. So it's a pretty good gauge for yourself to see physically if you can hang in there. And we proved we could. We really knew we could. And and that'll that's all they'll do is they'll kneel down and run out the clock. Well, final score, Shenandoah 14, Monroe Central 7. Um, I think pretty much any, and I have said, you know, about all we can say about the ball game. Um, it's, you know, hard fought, and uh, it's just, um, it's, just a, it's just a good ball game all around. Oh, yeah. number of fans enjoyed this, just by the, you know, the $1,000 50-50. God tells you yeah. how many fans <laughs> were here. Yes, really, everybody got their money's worth. Uh, proud of all of our guys. Shenandoah's got a great team. They'll move on. They'll go 7-0. And uh, we'll try to regroup next week against the strong Barnesville team at their place. Always tough over there. And I'll think that'll wrap things up for this weekend. So uh, this is uh, Matt Singleton uh, along with Andy Schumacher. And um, we'll see you all next week over at Barnesville. Good night.